Okay, so now we want to talk about some of the more advanced, I guess, brush tools, uh, the ones that kind of live around the perimeter of our screen here. So some of these have been covered previously. As you know from previous lessons, you can paint directly on the object in a paint layer. You can also create a uh, fill layer and then inside that fill layer, create a mask and then paint on the object within there as well. So both the options are still available and most of these techniques will um, be available on both of those options. So the first off is just the paint tool in the upper left hand side here. Again, pretty straightforward. It's just uh, activating our, our actual brush. There is a drop down for physical paint. Um, this one is taking advantage of some of the additional um, like dynamic paint things that can happen and you have control over all of the those movements and the shapes and how that kind of wraps around down here the lifetime the velocity all that good stuff truthfully i've never once really kind of used those i like i said I, it still feels like they're in early development i think there's good capabilities for them but all of the physical like because you'll see it there's a physical eraser here too i i haven't i don't really use any of those if you find them useful go for it um but basically we've got our paintbrush here down below we've got our eraser so if you have a paint layer um again you're gonna want to you can use that to erase it out um then down here we have our different uh oh actually the next one is a projection uh this one's interesting so once i click this you'll see that my screen kind of changes and i have this overlay so what this allows me to do is to take an image and paint that image directly on the object. Now this is really, I've seen this used a lot for like characters, if you're getting like blemishes on the skin and you just kind of want to put it in a perfect spot. Um, the way that you use this is, is you want to scroll down here into your base color and you just want to put a image in there, whatever you want to paint on there. So for me, I'm just gonna throw this Gorilla logo in. And now you can see that that kind of pops up on top here. And what I can do is I can position my character around in the scene and depending on where I paint now, that will appear on the object itself. So as you can see, this is pretty large on my screen. In order to change that size, I just hold down the S key, S is in Sally. And you can see that down here, if I uh, S middle mouse, it'll pan it around. The right will zoom it in and zoom it out. And then the left will rotate it. If I shift left, it'll lock it in place. So let's say I just wanted to paint this directly on this character right here, right? I could kind of position it, angle it, whatever I want. And then what happens is, is it paints it directly on the object. So now it's there, right? And the crazy thing about this is it does it from the angle of the camera. So like if I say I take this and I project it right on here, and then I paint this whole thing, it does the angle, like I said, the angle directly from the camera. So it, you can see that it um, kind of projects at that angle. It's kind of one of like those optical illusion paintings you'll see on the sidewalk sometimes. But um, but this that can be very useful for for people who are again are doing like blemishes on skin, uh, wrinkles, things like that. Um, for me, I I'm not crazy about it because I find it to be a little bit of a by hindrance, the non-destructive workflow. Like again, it's a pain layer, so it's just kind of on there. Um, if I want to have this stuff on, I can simply just drag it on here, and now I have this this kind of warp layer on it that I can adjust. So, so that's just my personal take. Um, the next one down is our polygon fill. So this is uh, painting in in different ways. So again, I'll just make this like a bright red for right now, so we can see it. Um, once I cl click this, these options at the top change for me. So what I can do is I can um, select either just the polygons. Oh, actually, I'm change the color here. I can either um, you know do it by just the polygons. I can do it by the, um, the actual the tries that are inside of the polygon. So each, just so you know, every polygon's broken up into two triangles. Um, I could do the mesh fill, which is um, which grabs larger chunks of data. And then this one I use a lot. This is the UV chunk fill. So what this does is this grabs um, the chunks from the UV islands here. So I can grab the top or just like one of the shoes, maybe, what, what is that? The, oh, the back of the pants, the front of the pants, uh, whatever the case may be. So that's that's a good example of the, of the chunk fill there. All right. Um, the other thing that you want to be aware of, a, a couple tools down here. So there's like a smudge, a clone stamp, and a material sampler. Um, for those... Yeah, let me just, I can just show that here real quick. So if I paint like a red thing on here, I can take the smudge tool 
and like smudge it, smear it, mix it around if I wanted to. Um, I could take the clone stamp tool and this just works just like any other clone stamp tool. But the only difference between this and like Photoshop is I have to hold down the, was it the S? Was it the S? No, S was for the other one. V as in victory key. And I, that gives me my square there. And then I can clone stamp whatever I want over here. Um, so, so that again, it can be very useful. Um, and then the material sampler node is, or the material sampler one is if I want to just like select a particular color in a particular spot. So like, let's say I went, you know, and again, this is if I'm working in the non-destructive workflow and I go over here and I'm, um, uh, oh, let me change that. And I'm painting, painting. I go over here and I paint this color and I go over here and I paint this color. And I want to go back to painting this one. I can use the material selector just to like take me back to those values. And that will just adjust color. It'll adjust all the other attributes as well. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so that's the material picker will stick up there. And then I kind of wanted to focus on these at the top as well, because these could be very useful. Um, so again, if we're painting, the 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 first one is just the, the preview look. So it's either the full preview cursor, which we have. We just have the outline, which won't show the color or the crosshair in the middle, whichever you prefer there. And then this is controlling the size of the brush which I can also control, ironically, by hitting the control key and right mouse button, sliding that back and forth. So that'll increase and decrease the size of the brush. Uh, and then the next two are flow and stro stroke or opacity. So how much the, um, how, like if I wanted to just kind of like layer this up together, I can flow it out that way, either through the flow or the opacity. Um, and then the next two are, or the, the, then there's spacing which allows me that if I wanted to, if I'm holding down the button here, if I wanted to, you know, space out the uh, the area between them versus making one continuous line. Distance is a really cool one. This is a lazy mouse feature. So do you see that, that black ring around it? What that does is wherever my mouse is inside of that, it basically gets an average of the positions to create a much smoother stroke. And I can decrease or increase the size of that as well. Very, very handy for if you're using a mouse and wanting to create some nice straight lines. Um, this ease out is if you have the pressure gauge activated, how you want that pressure to go. And then another big one to use, which is great, is this uh, symmetry tool. So that'll split your character. You know, you can, uh, you've can, you got your symmetry settings here, um, and then you can either set it in whichever direction that you want. But the great thing is, is now, if I wanted to create like a pattern on one side or another, you can do that gimbal eyes. Hello. I just changed his personality a lot. Uh, so basically, so yeah, so that's that's the main gist of, of the painting tools there. Uh, but if, yeah, these are gonna be, again, um, they can be, most of them can be used either in the paint mode or as a masking operation, depending on how you wanna work with it.